Warning, this episode of Film Theory is not safe for work. Oh wait, you thought I meant it was full of naked people or violence or heavy swearing, right? No, no, no. I mean, today we're talking about Willy Wonka and his chocolate factory. And no, when I say chocolate factory, that's not meant to be some kind of weird innuendo. Get your minds out of the gutter, people. Internet, welcome to Film Theory, your golden ticket to a ruined childhood. Today's video hits really close to home for me because we're talking about one of my all-time favorite childhood films, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Sure, as a kid, I thought Wonka's factory was the most fanciful, fantastic place to visit ever. I mean, there are mushrooms where you can scoop out whipped cream and eat it in the main building. Knock down some of the candies from that tree, nom nom nom. But now that I'm an adult and have people who work for me, I see it as the horrendously unsafe sweat shop that it is. So unsafe, in fact, that it would be literally illegal to produce a single bar of chocolate out of there. So get ready to melt down those childhood dreams and send them down the chocolatey river of disappointment, because not only does Mr. William Wonka have one of the most illegal factories on the entire planet, but what's worse, I can prove to you that he actually knows it. There's no earthly way of knowing. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> yes there is, Wonka. You've been pulling the wool over our eyes for far too long, my friend, and today I'm exposing the grand conspiracy of your golden ticket giveaway like the nougaty inside of a scrum diddly bar. So, loyal theorists, get ready to come with me and you'll be in a world of OSHA violation. In case you're not up to speed with the super saccharine sweatshop that is Wonka's Chocolate Factory, here's the quick rundown. Eccentric candy maker genius Willy Wonka runs a chocolate factory with SpaceX levels of security. Nobody ever goes in. Nobody ever comes out. To protect his candy making secrets from his sticky fingered competitors who for some reason can't seem to figure out that all you need to do is mix cocoa powder together with butter, sugar, and vanilla. I mean seriously Slugworth, there just aren't that many ingredients in chocolate. Maybe sprinkle in some nuts or toffee if you're feeling dangerous. In both versions of the movie, the modern Charlie and the Chocolate Factory as well as the vastly superior original version Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, which is the one I'm going to be focused on for this theory, Wonka opens his doors up to five lucky kids who've begged, borrowed, and stolen to get their hands on one of his five golden tickets. As they tour the factory, we as the movie-going audience get a first-hand look at the unbelievable wonders and hazards that Wonka has littered everywhere. And these aren't just some little issues that make life around the factory inconvenient, these are Occupational Safety and Health Administration violations, or OSHA violations. They're illegal, they're life-threatening, and they are everywhere. And here's the interesting thing about OSHA violations. They don't just come with a little finger wag and a couple of demerits on your business owner report card. They come with fines. Huge fines. And enough of them will totally be able to shut down your business for good. So let's figure out how big of a legal tab that Willy Wonka has racked up for himself. The suspense is terrible. He, he's gonna go this time. I hope it'll last. The first violations seem pretty small, but it'll give you a sense of what real world business owners face when they're trying to create a safe work environment for their employees. See if you can spot it in this clip. Better press on. Hey, the room is getting smaller. No, it's not. He's getting bigger. Did you catch that one? Inside this room, all of my dreams become realities. You know what else is going to become a reality for you? A big whopping fine. Code of Regulations 29 Part 1910 Subpart E Point 37I OSHA says that all ceilings must be 7 foot 6 inches or higher. This is specifically for fire safety in the event that the exit needs to be used as an emergency exit. But just think, this is where we are starting. If Wonka is getting a fine for the height of a measly hallway, then you know that old Willy is in for a long night. Or a long episode of film theory. Next, the chocolate room, the centerpiece of my childhood dreams, and my current dreams, and the horrific nightmares of an OSHA agent. In this scene, you'll see that Veruca Salt cuts herself on a rock in the room. Well, it turns out that that was real blood, and that the actress who played her, Julie Don Cole, still has a scar from that injury on set, which she got from one of the jagged rocks that were used as props in the set. A workplace injury in the movies, as well as a workplace injury in the factory. That's fine number two. 
you. There are a few other pedantic things in here to find, including the stairs that Oompa Loompas walk down. Those are under the 22-inch minimum width required by building codes, and they don't have a vertical banister. So that's finds number three and four. But okay, I hear ya. A little cut, a little banister, a little hallway, come on! That sort of stuff could be fixed in a day, so who cares? Well, first off, who should care is the business owner, because all those things may be little to you, but they result in big fines. Thousands of dollars for small infractions like that, and we're only just beginning! Let's get to the big ones, like the Chocolate River. First, you have food running through an open-air factory. That is a huge strike there. The workers around it also aren't wearing any protective or sterile clothing, and literally anyone who touches the chocolate contaminates the entire supply, as Augustus so kindly demonstrates for us. Don't do that, you're contaminating my entire river! Contaminating the entire river, Wonka says, as he doesn't shut his factory down to clean out the sweaty child floating in the chocolate. So here we have no guardrails, no protective clothing, working with contaminated food, and failing to clean up those contaminations. All of these are OSHA violations for basic safety, with the contamination issue getting some nice extra scrutiny from the Food and Drug Administration. And as a fun fact, if Augustus's germ-ridden body did in fact make someone sick from a chocolate bar on the other end, Wonka would be responsible for fines of around $350,000 at the time of the movie release, or about $1.5 million in today's terms per person made sick. Since we have no way of knowing the fallout from Augustus's chocolate dip, we can't really count these, but they would literally be enough to put the factory out of business if they happen to ship those contaminated chocolate bars out. That being said, we're still not done with the violations that we can count in this room, which include the fact that once someone actually falls into the chocolate river, they get suctioned up into a huge unfiltered pipe. So he's had it now, the suction's got it. Leading to them possibly drowning and suffocating. And if you survive all of that, there's still a good chance that you get boiled alive. Look sharp, or her little boy's liable to get poured into the boiler. So strike for the unfiltered pipe, and additional strike for no safety protocol. Moving further into the movie, we survive a traumatizing boat ride, which is shockingly one of the safest things in this entire movie. This is somehow actually okay. But don't worry, we're about to hit Wonka's secret inventing room, the place where candy and lawsuits get made. First of all, all those steaming vats are violations of OSHA's rules around hot pipes in the workplace. Reference number 1910.261 sub point K11, quote, all exposed steam and hot water pipes within seven feet of the floor shall be covered with an insulating material, or guarded. And you guessed it, each vat or pipe counts as a separate violation. So, uh, let's see here. We have eight of those. Oh, and no guardrails again. You think you're slick, Willy? This is just laziness. Oh, and there are live bees in this room. So, yeah, that counts too. And last up, there also seems to be a complete lack of safety equipment anywhere. Unless, of course, you count the Oompa Loompa fabric Mickey Mouse style gloves. Shouldn't you be wearing rubber gloves? You'll have the health inspectors up here, you know that, don't you? Right you are, Mr. Salt. You would have made a good film theorist. OSHA code 1910.132A requires that, quote, protective equipment, including personal protective equipment for eyes, face, head, and extremities is provided, used, and maintained in any situation involving food or chemicals. And we know plenty of chemicals being used in this room are, well, to put it lightly, hazardous. Violet, you're turning violet, Violet! The next workplace hazard is in the fizzy lifting drink room, where Charlie and Grandpa Joe float away and almost get themselves chopped to bits by the fan blades at the top of the room. Stay away from Charlie, it'll chop us to bits! Like he just said. Now, here's the thing, a fan at the top of a room this tall isn't a violation, but OSHA would still be able to book Wonka for negligence in making the room with the deadly ceiling the same room with the soda that makes you float. If you read the book the movie's based on, Wonka even mentions that a few Oompa Loompas that they didn't tie down floated off into the blue, but we're just gonna let those slide because we're focused on the on-screen versions. But still, you're an awful person, Willy Wonka. Moving right along, we get to see Veruca's shining moment with the Golden Geese, where she racks up a jackpot of fines. You see all those boxes crashing down on the Oompa Loompas? Well, that's right, OSHA has regulations against stacking boxes too high. In fact, anything stacked over five feet has to be secured so it doesn't fall over, like you see right here in this scene. So we get ourselves a strike for every single tall stack that you see in the room. Conservatively, I'm gonna say that's about 13. Then, of course, we have the famous moment where Veruca stands on the egg decator and falls down the garbage chute into the furnace. How I want it now! 
Yep, that's another handful of safety violations. No guardrails, an open shoot down into the furnace, and again, a violation for each egg decator, so that's at least four separate strikes right there. But hey, now we're down to just two kids, so how many violations could be left in this movie, right? Oh, so many. Let's start with what happens when you cover people in soap and send them through a car wash. Exposing people to chemicals, including most soaps like dishwashing detergents, is an OSHA violation in the highest amounts. And they're also on a moving vehicle with no seat belts, so that's a strike for everyone. Also, as a fun side note, these violations actually also happened in real life during the shooting of this very scene, where they covered everyone in soap. The entire cast puffed up from all that detergent irritation. It took days of medical treatment for the cast to return to normal and return to set. So yeah, there are actually reasons for all these stupid rules being in place. Go figure. Last up on our tour, we start mixing food violations with electricity. What could possibly go wrong there? Well, even though they do have safety equipment and no exposure to chemicals, unfortunately Wonka's still getting himself an infraction for violating the occupational exposure to hazardous chemicals in laboratory standard. Reference 29 CFR 1910.1450, which specifically covers labs where this sort of research and development takes place, allowing a small boy to be able to operate a massive ray gun with no safety protocol in place? That's a strike. And seriously, Wonka, guard rails. Guard rails are gonna go a long way here. So are we done with this death trap yet? Almost. Even though our tour of the factory ends, we get one more bonus strike thrown in for good measure with our visit to the Great Glass Elevator. It's an elevator. It's a wonka -vator. Which has nothing to stop it from crashing straight through the glass roof of the factory. But this roof is made of glass. It'll shatter into a thousand pieces. But we'll be cut to ribbons. So let's just slap on an extra violation, or three, for everyone in that elevator. wonka -vator. And with that, our grand total comes to 60 OSHA violations. And that's just what you can see in the movie. 60 is very confusing. Conservative. Now, like I said at the beginning of this episode, Wonka better be selling the heck out of those chocolate bars, because every one of those violations comes with a fine. But now, of course, we come to the real question. How much are those fines gonna cost? Well, according to OSHA, quote, any employer who willfully or repeatedly violates the requirements of this act may be assessed a civil penalty of not more than $70,000 for each violation, but not less than $5,000 for each willful violation, end quote. And it's important to mention that these are the guidelines from 1971 when the original Wonka movie came out and was set. In today's numbers, that's about $31,000 to $436,000 per individual violation. At lowest, Wonka is looking at a $1.86 million price tag, and at highest, he's shelling out a whopping $26.1 million in today's dollars. Again, just from the 60 OSHA violations that we see in the like six, seven, eight rooms that he tours us through. Now, obviously, a range of five $5,000 to $70,000 is huge. What determines which end of the spectrum you fall on is your past history, and whether it seems like you as a business owner just made a mistake, or whether you really don't care about the safety of your workplace. So would OSHA have pity on Willy Wonka? <laughs> short answer is definitely not. They factor in things like the seriousness of the violation, which in our case includes violations like child-sized pipes to a boiler room in the furnace, as well as exposing children and workers to chemicals that turn them into blueberries. Also, a small business is likely to get off the hook much easier than a multinational chocolate mega factory. So Wonka has no case to plead here because he ships to literally every continent. We see it in the golden ticket coverage. And when it comes to showing a good face effort to keep things safe? Well, let's just say that Wonka has a bad track record there, too. He's not even good at pretending. Stop, don't, come back. Help. Police. Murder. In conclusion, Mr. Wonka, we film theorist OSHA investigators find you guilty on every count. And let's face it, probably dozens more that we don't see in your 90-minute movie. You, sir, are looking squarely in the eye of that $26.1 million fine, or $4.2 million in 1971 terms. And if you all watching at home right now think that's bad, I'm not even done. You see, the thing about safety inspectors is that they don't just show up once, fine you, and then leave. When you get fined, you're also given an order to fix whatever issues the inspector discovered. When the inspector returns, if they find that you still haven't fixed the problems, then you get fined again. This is called the failure to abate, and that results in its own fine. You pay the same fines again for every single day that your factory wasn't in compliance. So 4.2 million inflation adjusted dollars isn't just a one-time fee, it's how much Mr. Wonka would be paying 
per day for as long as all those issues go unfixed. That's 182 million inflation adjusted dollars per week and 9.5 billion dollars for a year of non-compliance. For comparison, Hershey's current revenues are about 7.421 billion dollars per year, which would put Willy Wonka's factory in complete bankruptcy in a matter of months. But, and here's the biggest but of them all, my friends, this is no surprise to Willy Wonka. No, in fact, he knows about all these violations better than anyone. You see, the Occupational Safety and Health Act, the legislation that created OSHA in the first place, was passed in 1970. It took effect in 1971, the exact same year that Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory is set and the year that it hit theaters. With the establishment of OSHA laws in 1970, Willy Wonka realized pretty fast that his factory wasn't long for this world given the way he runs it and how dangerous it is to everyone inside. So Wonka's decision to open his factory to five lucky children, a decision that seems to come out of nowhere in the movie, Willy Wonka's opening his factory, he's gonna let people in! You sure? Isn't actually motivated by a desire to do good, or even pass his love of chocolate and candy making secrets on like a legacy. No, it's to offload this dumpster fire of a business onto one poor, vulnerable, unsuspecting child before Wonka himself is hit with all these fines. I had to find a child. Charlie, who comes out of destitution and thinks he's hit the lottery with his golden ticket, believes he's inheriting Wonka's fortune. But the truth is that he's actually inheriting Willy Wonka's massive legal trouble and billions of dollars of debt. He's not the most pure of heart or the nicest or whatever. He's just the biggest chump and the child in the most desperate situation that Wonka can prey on to escape OSHA and a lifetime of corporate debt. But hey, that's just a thing. Theory. A film theory. And I know that it's a little disappointing that all our candy-coated dreams have been destroyed by this episode, but if you're looking for a much sweeter deal than just five golden tickets, well then check out our partner for today's episode, Dollar Shave Club. Yes, I already use the razors. You've heard me talk about them and you already know that those things are great, but those aren't gonna keep your body from stinking up the great glass elevator or they're not gonna get your mouth clean after eating one too many scrum diddly umptious bars. And that's why Dollar Shave Club is no longer longer just the shave club. They've expanded to everything from toothpaste to hair styling products. So you know that you're gonna be looking and feeling your best, whether you're being blown up like a blueberry or sucked away to a boiler room. They should rebrand themselves as the dollar look good, feel good club. Anyway, just imagine if these children had used one of their great products. If Augustus had just used that smooth as silk shaving butter, then shoom! He's not getting stuck in that pipe. He's shooting through that thing like a rocket. Buttery smooth like a baby's body. And tell you what, Veruca's gonna have herself a mess down below after her brush with a boiler room of death. Well, she can take care of that mess in one wipe with the Dollar Shave Club One Wipe Charlie Butt Wipes. And here's the best part, you don't need to be a spoiled rich kid to afford it. So don't be a Veruca, join the club for only $5 at dollarshaveclub.com slash film theory. F-I-L-M-T-H-E-O-R-Y. Or, you know, just save yourself the trouble and click the link in the top line of the description. New members are getting their first month of the Daily Essential Starter Kit for only $5. So you can try out a lot of the new products that I just mentioned, see how cool they are, and decide which ones are the ones that you want to keep showing up conveniently at your door every month. If only everything in life were that sweet, remember that's dollarshaveclub.com slash film theory. Click the link below and you've got yourself a golden ticket to personal hygiene. Click it now!